Hey everybody and welcome back to another devlog. I know it's been a pretty long time since I've uploaded, but I've been getting ready to finally finish high school and actually get a degree in game design uh, over in college. So that's some really exciting stuff. I honestly, I, I can't wait. We're gonna make some awesome team projects and I'm absolutely gonna share them here uh, whenever I get the chance. But I'm just letting you guys know that I might not be able to upload as often anymore just because of the sheer amount of college coursework. But uh, nonetheless, I've still done a little bit on Bitlands. But before we go and continue to talk about Bitlands, I just want to mention that we hit over 300 members in our Discord. That's a lot of people. So to commemorate that, I'm actually going to be hosting one last competition. And the winner of this competition will get their own NPC in Bitlands before the game is released. I know I did this once before a while back, and you can actually see the NPC in the game Bitlands right now. I know I did do this once a while back, but I want to do it one more time to give other people a chance to get their own NPC in the game. And of course with more dialogue and more NPCs, it just helps contribute to the world building more. Okay, so I've been really focusing on getting the final product ready and squashing all of the bugs and errors and uh, polishing as many things as possible. That includes programming errors with uh, platforms, collisions, enemies, and stuff like that, and kind of smoothing out the AIs and uh, overall level designs, so everything there is actually pretty smooth. But the main thing I've been focusing on is actually random world generation. You can now play levels that are completely randomly generated from start to finish, and it's endless. Which means you can also become a collector and get all of the golden enemy badges. So let's talk a little about how this random world generation works. So over here in my objects, I've got two random world generation controllers. So if I go over here, I got my world 1 generation and my world 2 generation. Now I haven't quite completed the world 3 generation yet, I'm still working on polishing the second one because I want to make sure that I get it right. And since the world 2 generation is in the crystal caverns, there's a lot of dynamic movement and tile placing that needs to be going on in order to make things feel smooth, so I'm taking my time uh, with that one. But let's go ahead and go into the world 1 random generation real quick. The best way I can describe what this world generation is doing is we're basically taking this empty level, right? And we're almost writing a level like you would read a book. So we're going from left to right and we're incrementing throughout the level and we're placing little tiles. And you could actually also say set structures as well as we kind of go from left to right throughout the room, which is what you're seeing here. We're first determining the width and the height of our actual level itself and then we're creating all the instance layers because we want to make sure that you know the grass shows maybe behind some of the tiles and that, that things don't have strange depths and they don't show like in front of the player because uh, that would be very annoying and this is where the main meat of the world generation happens is right over here so the way that this works is that every time it goes through I believe about eight blocks from left to right so like eight dirt blocks, it chooses a random structure to generate at that point. And right over here is where we choose it. So this for loop is actually just looping through the room like I said earlier. We're just going from left to right, and then we're choosing a structure to generate in that specific section. And we keep doing that over and over and over until we finally reach the end of the room. And what's crazy about this is that it's completely random. So if I go into one of these structure generation scripts, which I have very many of, for uh, the first world. Let's go ahead and take a look at the water script, which generates a little area of water that the player has to jump over. So this is where the real magic happens, because within these random structures that we choose from, there's actually even more random variation. You see, whenever we choose to generate a structure, I also give it a certain width. So that means that the structure might be four blocks wide, or six blocks wide, or five blocks wide, which means that on specific widths, of the structure, I can actually create different things. So you can see over here, when the width is equal to 5, so if the structure is 5 blocks wide, there's a chance that I might create a piranha in the water, right, to jump over and try and bite the player, and there's also a chance that I create an orc on top of the platform that spawns over the water. And this is all just in one structure. There are eight other structures uh, that contribute to the finished product of the random world generation. And you can think of it almost like a tree. 
you start off with the main random generation function, and then you go into all these different subsets and scripts and structures, and within those structures are even more random generation structures. But that's essentially how the random world generation works and it works flawlessly. We can start from the beginning of a level, and by the time we reach the end, it'll just regenerate a new world over and over and over again. And because it's so optimized and specific, there's actually less lag on the random world generation levels than there is in the main levels, which is fantastic. Like, I've actually been running at around 1,000 to 2,000 FPS on the random world generation levels. And here's where it gets even more interesting. So for the random world generation for world two, instead of having one main section, I have two different main sections. Because as you know, in the crystal caverns, you can go up and down and there's all sorts of different obstacles, which makes it a little bit more tricky to make random world generation for those areas. So what I've done is I've split it up into two main sections, one that's closer to the ground and one that's uh, higher up in the air, which has new and different obstacles. Just like the last one, I'm just choosing between which main section I want to go to, and then once I choose that main section, then I choose within the main structures, and within those structures, I then randomize uh, what's actually happening in there. So you can see that there's a lot of almost inception in a way, and you can almost model this on a family tree. It's uh, It really does resemble that. But so far as you can see, I've really only got the ground generation up and running. I still have uh, only just started doing the air generation, but once I've gotten the air structure generation finished, the random world generation for world 2 will be done. So I hope for anybody who's also a game developer that uh, that little explanation there was maybe helpful, because this is a really good way, I think, to make a random world generation, and it's a method that I came up with completely by myself, and maybe it is a little bit specific to what I'm doing, but I guess the concept might be helpful if you're trying to do something similar, or at least make pseudo-random generation. So I can't exactly tell you what the final boss is going to be, because then that would kind of ruin the point of playing the game. But I can show you the sprite for this guy. So this is going to be one of the frames of the final boss. This is the uh, the dragon. It's a little bit choppy at the moment because I'm, I've really only just started working on it. It doesn't have any arms or legs, so maybe I do have to change it. Now, the animation for the idle state is not so great, uh, but you know what, the more you fail, I think uh, the more you learn, so I'm definitely going to be redoing this and it's hopefully going to be a bit better in the future. Aside from that though, I haven't really done much work on the actual content of Bitlands because, believe it or not, it's actually a finished game already. There's nothing else I need to add to the game except for the final boss, of course, um, but I've actually already finished the credits and everything that comes after. Well, I believe that about wraps it up for this devlog. I know it wasn't too long, but I really don't like making videos unless I have something of value to share with you guys, and it's just been so long that I felt like I needed to give you an update. But make sure to join our Discord. We're going to be hosting that competition very, very soon after this video goes up, so you should make sure to get there as soon as possible. You can become a patron for a pretty cheap price. You get full access to beta versions of all of my games, and you also get a really cool role in my Discord server, and a whole bunch of other cool stuff. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next devlog.